Hi, welcome to another Fluid SharePoint video. My name is Colin Kelly Cook. Please remember to like, share, and subscribe this video so I can keep bringing you more fresh new content. So today we're gonna to get your own domain set up in your Office 365 tenant. There's a lot of confusion around this subject. People think that Microsoft will sell you the domain or that you have to use GoDaddy in order to get this set up. None of this is true. We only need three things. We need our Office 365 tenant, we need a domain that we've purchased through a service provider and we need access to the DNS records. Now, without going into too much detail, DNS is a way for your service provider to know where to send traffic once it reaches its servers. When you type a URL into a web browser, it goes to your service provider, your DNS will then say, what is this person looking for and send them to the right location. When we set up our domain in Office 365, we're gonna add some new entries into that DNS record so that when people are trying to send mail to your domain name, we can route that to Office 365. We'll go through that in more detail when we get to that stage. Now it's purely coincidental, but I do use GoDaddy for my hosting and for my domain name purchases. If you have any other service that you're using, that's fine, it's not a problem. Just need to make sure that that service allows you access to edit the DNS. So here we can see all of the domain names that I currently own. Um, I have this dev-sharepoint.com, which I use purely for development purposes. So we're gonna add this one to our tenant today. Over here, I have access to DNS, so I can just click on here. So here we have my current DNS entries. You can see they're pretty basic. Um, for this one, it simply goes to a website. For yours, there may be more. You may already have a mail server, which this is routing to, which is used by your service provider. And it's important to remember that when we do do this switch over, all mail is gonna be routed to Office 365 and your current mail provider will stop receiving the emails. So if you don't already have a domain, obviously you can just purchase it through your service provider. Once that's all set up and ready, we can go into Office 365 and get it added in. So we just need to head over to portal.office.com. This is already logged in with my admin account, so I've got access to the admin portal. If you don't have an Office 365 account, check out my other video, which helps you set up a developer account, which is completely free, and we can do the same process in it. Once we're in our tenant, we just need to head over to the admin portal. Once we're in our admin portal, we just need to head over to setup. Now it's not initially visible. We need to just click show all in this left hand toolbar, head down to setup and then click domains. Now it's important to remember that we can only ever assign a domain to a single Office 365 tenant. We cannot reuse this domain across different tenants. So once it's in here, we either have to remove it to add it to a number or it's stuck with this. One of the main benefits of adding a domain, when we first set up our Office 365 tenant, as you would have seen in my last video, it sets us up with a domain name of the tenant that we've given it, .onmicrosoft.com. These are our usernames. So currently anyone who's signing in is signing in as their name at fluidsharepointdevo2.onmicrosoft.com. It's a bit of a mouthful, it's quite a lot to type, and it doesn't quite look how we want it to look. Once we add our new domain, we'll be able to change those usernames over. We'll also then be able to set up email accounts for those people using our custom domain name, which is gonna look a lot better if we're sending out emails to clients. So now let's add the domain. So if we click on add domain, so now we just need to add our domain name in here. Mine is dev-sharepoint.com. We don't need the www. Then we're gonna click use this domain. Now it's gonna ask me to verify this domain. And this is where it gets confusing. It literally tells me I need to sign into GoDaddy to get the authorization. Now, if you don't actually uh, use GoDaddy as a service provider, just click more options and go down to add a verification record. Now, even though I use GoDaddy, I'm gonna show you the process manually just so that you can see how it works. If you do have GoDaddy, it will sign you in and it will just add this record for you. So we're not actually losing much in the process. So if I click continue, now to add the records, I just need to take note of this information here and head over to my domain. So here we have the records, I'm gonna click add. So the type is a text record. The name or host is what it's calling it here, is at the text value. So we're just gonna click this little button which will copy that value to the clipboard, paste that into there, and the TTL 3600. You can just add that in there. We're going to save that. Now, if we head back over to Microsoft Office 365 setup, we can click verify. This may always not work initially straight away. It may take a little bit of time. Um, I've found recently it actually works quite quickly. 
So here we go. So it's told me that that's fine. Um, it's decided that I do own that DNS and now it's going to tell me that I need to set up a few more DNS records to get things working. So now we just need to activate our records. But here again, it's slightly confusing. Microsoft is trying to send me directly to just add the DNS records itself for GoDaddy, which is great if you're with GoDaddy, we can just click continue and it will add those DNS records to my domain without me needing to do anything. However, for the purposes of the video, we're going to take the manual process. So if you have another service provider, then we just need to use this option. So if we click more options, so now we can use um, add our own records. So we're going to do this version, click continue. So here it's going to give us the records that we need to add. Initially, it's just ticked the exchange and exchange online protection records. If we expand these out, we can see that it's given us an MX record, a CNAME record and text records. If you do want to use other services, you can use them down here. So if we tick this box, Microsoft Teams and Skype for Business, it's going to give us some additional DNS records. So we just need to go through these and add them one at a time into an, our, our DNS system. So I'm going to do that now and then skip through for you. So here we go. I've now added all of my DNS records in. I've got all my CNAMES, my MX records, my SRV, and my text records as well. Now, once we've got all of those in, um, we can go back to the Office 365 Center and click Next, and it'll tell us that our domain setup is complete. So now we can click Done. So in my domains, we can see that I have two healthy domains. That means the setup has been completed and all of my DNS records were fine. Now, it automatically changed this domain to our default domain. We can add multiple domains in here. We can have 10, 15, 20, 100 if we want to. We might want one to be a specifically default. All of that means that when we add new users, that's the domain name that they're going to get given. We can switch it back to fluid SharePoint dev02 on Microsoft.com if we want. I'm going to leave it as dev SharePoint. So now if we head over to my users and click on active users. So I've already got this user that I created during my other video, Colin Kelly Cook. So he's using the fluid SharePoint dev02 on Microsoft.com, but he's pretty bored of typing that in and it doesn't look very professional. So if I click on to Colin Kelly Cook here and just click manage username, now what you'll notice on the right hand side, I can actually change his username to use dev-sharepoint.com instead. So let's just save the changes there. Now it's important to note that underneath every single username always retains the original tenant admin address. So ckc at dev-sharepoint.com is now the official username for this user. But if we look at aliases, we can see underneath ckc at fluidsharepointdev02.onmicrosoft.com still exists. If we sent an email to either one of these two, they would be received. And we can continually add new aliases. So if we have multiple domains and that user just wants one user account, but through multiple domains, that's something we can do as well. Now, if we add a new user, let's just click add a new user. So let's add a test user, test user, user. Username test01. So here we can see now dev SharePoint has come up as the default. If I wanted to, I can go and select one of my other domains instead. We're just going to use dev SharePoint, auto generate a password. Just need to give them a display name. Here we go. Click next. Then we're just going to assign them a license and set them up. So we've just set up a user with our new domain name. Now that user can use that email address to receive email. They can also use that to log into the Office 365 account. Perfect. Just what we were after. Thanks for watching. I hope the video provided some value for you. If it did, please remember to like, share and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Also head over to my website, www.fluid-sharepoint.com. Follow me on LinkedIn and Twitter. If there's any content you'd like to see in future, please let me know.